Okay, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, today on the first panel about uh, dynamics of household and living arrangements in Asia. And so it's a pity that our first uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Nguyen uh, Juk Vin, won't be able to join us. Um, and as a result, we will have uh, three papers uh, respectively on Thailand, uh, Pakistan, and on Japan. And so uh, as a result, uh, our each speaker will have more time and 15 minutes, and then we will have a joint uh, Q&A discussion around 10 to 15 minutes. All right, and so without further ado, let's welcome our first uh, presenter, uh, Professor Patama Mapata Nawang from uh, Mahido University to discuss about uh, changes in household and living arrangement in Thailand. Uh, uh, please, uh, Professor Patama, now time is yours. You can just uh, cl uh, yeah, click share screen. Uh, slideshow. Slideshow and uh, from, from beginning, uh, uh, oh, on yeah, the very yeah, last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, mm. thank you so much. No problem. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Patamawa Patanawong. I'm, uh, uh, I'm teaching in the Institute for Population and Social Research, Mahidon University. For today, I will present like a preliminary analysis, uh, the, house, the changes in household size and living arrangements during 1996-2020 in Thailand. Uh, yeah, my, my analysis, uh, it may be different from other study or other presentation or presentation in the morning. But anyway, I, I, I try to explain my uh, analysis. First of all, I would like to uh, mention about something. Uh, studying of household and living arrangements changes in Thailand. This kind of study uh, began in, I think, the mid of 20th century. At the beginning, it focused on family rather than household. For example, nuclear family, extended family. But uh, later on, the main uh, uh, at that time, or even now, the main source of data was from population census, which we already know that the enumeration unit was a dwelling unit or household. That's, uh, uh, the study in Thailand sometimes the interchangeable between the term of household and families always found. Uh, the direction of studying, as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, moved to change to be the study of living arrangements of older persons when population aging had been increasing. And to define the type of living arrangements, I, 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 I just focus in, in Thailand, just only in Thailand. Huh? Uh, the generally, uh, the, the term relationship is use of older person and uh, other household members was used as a criterion uh, to define the different type of living arrangements among the older persons. And in Thailand, moreover, most studies use individual or older person at unit of analysis. Very late, the study in terms of household uh, were found. So to, to me, uh, I think that the, the question is, what will be if the living arrangement are studied at the household level? and different criteria from general studies if used to define the living arrangements. That, that is my question. So why I uh, start to study uh, household living arrangement in the different criteria of classification or uh, classify household. So the objective of my analysis is to explore the changes in household size Living arrangement and living arrangements during 1996 to 2020 in Thailand. I start from 1996 because of this is this 
this year was the year that the GFR of Thailand was below replacement level and later on is declining over time. The method that I used, uh, okay, I, I, I didn't use census data because of the last census uh, conduct in 2010. We, we, we still not have uh, 2020 census yet because due to the COVID situation in Thailand and this year plan to be the census year. So I used the 1996, 2006, 2010, 2015, and 2020 household socioeconomic surveys uh, for the analysis. This survey is a national representative survey conducted by the National Statistical Office of Thailand, which covering around 50,000 household samples in municipal and non-municipal areas in every province. This survey conduct every year. In the past, conduct every two years, but right now, conduct every year. Um, the unit of analysis that I used in this study was household, and the living arrangements that I used uh, were classified by three following criteria combined with the household size. The three criteria that I used uh, is a type of household, um, like a classified into two types, older person household and non-older person household. And then for age group, I use the main three age group of population, the young that we use that age under 15, the working age. In Thailand, we use 15 to uh, 59, not, not 64. And all age, uh, which means the age uh, 60 and over. And the last criteria that I use is the older person's household his data, whether the, uh, the, the head of the household is an older person or not. So from all the criteria that I use in my study or in this study, uh, uh, it may not clear in the uh, Stata do file, but I want to show that from the criteria, I, I can group from the, the uh, survey data that I use by using, like I said, older person household or not, older person uh, was head or not head, how many member, and what type of age group in the member in the household. All together, I can classify in uh, to 43 types of household, 43 types, and uh, which, uh, I mean, in terms of household size, I classify into three groups, uh, one person household, two persons household, and three or more persons household. Uh, the result will show how, how many of them uh, for each survey years. From uh, the beginning of grouping, finally, I, I group to be, uh, to lessen the group to be lower number of group. And finally, I found that there are 12 uh, groups of household type by uh, the definition that I used or the criteria that I used. Uh, from the old household can classify into older person's household or older person household. In this side, uh, older person household can be classified into older person at head or older person as not head. So all of them, you, uh, we have to be reminded that these are household. And in the side of a household, where older person as head uh, can classify into uh, five group, older person living alone, older person as head living with older person. It means that in this type of household, all older person living together. In the third group uh, is the household where older person as head living with young age. Young age mean uh, 
children age under 15 years. So you, you can see that uh, under the box, I show the number of possible number of household member for each type of household as well. For example, living alone, yes, there is only one person. And in the tie number two, uh, number of membership in the household can be two or more than two person. Uh, the number three, number of members, there will be two or more than two. So this type, type number four is older person household where older person uh, as head living with working age group. So no, no young age in this group of household. And the fifth uh, older person as head living with working age and young age. Okay, in this side is the older person household and older person uh, was head of the household. The, the other one is the older person household as well, but older person was not head. So in this group can classify into three subgroup. Uh, older person as not head living with working age. So it can, can imply that working age people in this household what was head of the household. Uh, the group seven is older person uh, as not head living with young age. Again, uh, this group may imply that young age uh, was head of household. It may be different in, 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 in the sense, right? The children was head of a household or the people age younger than 15 was his, but we, we, we found both in census and in survey data, but it's very rare in those kind of data. It's, I even show the percentage in the next few slides. And the type number eight is an uh, older person at his living with working age and young age. Okay, this is the size of older person household. And for the size of non-person, uh, non-older person household, can classify into three groups and uh, four groups. Sorry, uh, uh, working age, living alone, love, working age, living together with working age, and working age, living with young age, and working uh, young young age, living alone, or young age, living together with young age. This also very late in Thailand, but we, 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 found, we found some of them. Okay, okay. so from a preliminary analysis, the findings show that uh, in terms of household size, I show two types of results, the mean, the mean number of household size, as well as the distribution of household by type of uh, household size. So the mean household size was declining from uh, 3.6 average, 3.6 per household to be in 1996 to be 2.8 in 2020. As well as uh, the finding show that the percentage of household type in each year of survey data, it showed the increasing chain of uh, household size, uh, one person household and two person household is increasing over time, like uh, uh, around 9% of uh, one person household in 1996 to be 21% in 2020, and two household uh, members, two, uh, two members household, uh, in, uh, increasing from 16% to be 30% in 2020. In the other hand, the household, the percentage of three members, three or more, th more than three members household declining from uh, around uh, three fourths of total household in 1996 to be around half of them in 2020. This is the first finding from my analysis. The second one, 
it is about the percent of older person household. When I focus to only person, uh, only uh, older person household, uh, I, I, I found the increasing percentage of older person household. It increased from uh, around 30 percent to be uh, around 45 percent in 2020. And the distribution of person of uh, older person household classified by household size uh, was in the same direction as the, the overall type of household. It means that uh, person of older person household among one person household, two person household increasing, but uh, for three older pers uh, for three persons household, the percentage of older person household declining. The third finding, which will be maybe the last finding for my preliminary analysis, is about uh, household living arrangements. I, I don't want to use only living arrangement because of my analysis focus on household. So why I call this household living arrangement. Uh, from the diagram that I showed that uh, grouping from 43 group to be more broad group into 12, I found that, okay, uh, the increasing almost on every type of household living arrangement during 1996 to 2020, you can see the, uh, the up arrow uh, in the blue arrow, the declining percentage of this type of household uh, is the uh, household, older person household with older person as head, living with young age and working age, or three main age groups living together in Thailand, decreasing, decreasing from 11% uh, in 1996, to be 8% in 2020. I also found the declining of percentage of uh, household, uh, non-older person household, where working age, living with young age, declining. The declining is a huge declining from 54% or 55% decline to be 26%. Okay, other type of household, especially uh, older persons household, increasing over time from person, older household or one person or older person living alone, uh, increase from 2% to be 7% now in 2020. Uh, per older person living together increased from 2% to be 6.5%. Uh, and older person uh, household living with working age increasing uh, uh, twice or from 7% to be 13.4%. So these are all preliminary analysis. I, I, I will not discuss what happened or the reason behind because of, I want to show the, the method. I think that is different from other study in Thailand, which use the relationship between uh, uh, older person and other member in the household. So uh, all finding that I present here, I think that all of them are essential to the policy, social policy of Thailand now and then. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Bapanana Wang. And uh, our next paper uh, will by uh, Professor Arif Jawid from Lahore Garrison University on the benchmarked framework for quality of life of the elderly, a case study of Pakistan. And uh, Professor Jawid, now the time is yours. And uh, uh, each presenter will have 15 minutes.
Thank you very much. Just a moment, please. There are two things. I hope I am audible, number one, and second. Once I share the slides, please do let me know that you can see those slides. Yeah, we, we can see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can see them very, very well. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, to start with, I would say that <laughs> very good afternoon to everyone and assalamu alaikum. I am Arif Javed from Pakistan, Lahore Garrison University. Before I start, I thank Prof. Ushi and his team for the invitation to share my findings with the worthy conference members. As you see, the topic is a benchmark framework for quality of life of the elderly, a case study of Pakistan. Um, I would, uh, right from the beginning, I would just suggest that this research is uh, giving some of the uh, findings as well as providing the solution. Now, uh, before I start with the introduction, it would be better that if I could throw some light on the present situation of Pakistan. Quality of life of the elderly in Pakistan is neglected and it is happening like other universities, uh, other sorry countries. Uh, it is not a new thing. There is an increasing concern for identifying variables of quality of life of elderly. It is important to throw some light on the figures of Pakistan. In 2019, total population aged 60 and above was 14 million. Percentage of total population was 6.7%. Old age dependency ratio was 7.1%. And finally, people living alone aged 60 and above was 0.6%, which is not a very big challenge. Now, objectives of the study to identify the variables influencing the quality of life of the elderly. Second, to explore extent of the variables for quality of elderly. Third, to formulate a generic benchmark framework to address the issue of quality of life of elderly. And finally, to introduce the framework to the worthy audience of today. Here is the research methodology. This study explores variables influencing the quality of life of the elderly in Pakistan as it was promised in the objectives. It utilized document analysis approach, focusing on best researches and working papers. The rigorous review identified a range of quality of life practices. The study adopted an iterative process of interacting field notes with world best practices to select the most frequently used variables around the world. E ideas were also drawn from my benchmarking framework and quality of life of Barcelona model. Results and my response. The results reveal that generally the elderly are vulnerable to poor health and physical care. There is no proper mechanism, here I would say, lack of systemic approach. Systemic approach is, I hope, um, a majority of the people, they are aware of it. It is whole and holistic approach to ensure their sustainable quality of life. This situation demands for a benchmark framework of quality of life to safeguard their vulnerabilities in whole and holistic manner. The results also indicate that there are significant gaps from governance to end users that is elderly, including fit for purpose plan, implementation and monitoring. However, some of the key variables frequently used are pertaining to 
basic needs, government policies, health and education, and finally, family and neighborhood. Here is the framework, a benchmark framework for quality of life of the elderly. If you see right in the beginning, the innermost tier is showing government policies, then going to basic needs, shelter, food and amenities, health and education, and finally, family and neighborhood. The innermost tier is showing the key determinants or variables for this research. And if you see the outermost tier, it starts from UN Development Index, where we have UN SDGs, NGOs, think tank, and other ICT um, big, uh, I would say, uh, uh, resourceful person in this field. Now, the extent of these four, I would say, key determinants will be shown to you to bring it close to the understanding whatever uh, Profemi has carried out for his uh, living, um, uh, living uh, criteria, uh, which exceeds 40 plus variables. So it is related there. Uh, please, next one. Okay, now the extent of government policies. There are many, but this is just as a sample. I am showing you a couple of them. Government of Pakistan takes direction like other developed countries from United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 1, 3, 4, 5, 8, 10, and 11. For example, along with others, the SDG 8 states, government must take a stand against ageism and discrimination, promote accessible workplaces, and adopt flexible retirement policies that enable older workers to continue working as long as they wish. Hence, the senior citizen welfare was established in 2014 in Pakistan. Subsequently, the senior citizen bill 2020 was prepared and it is with National Assembly at the moment. Similarly, the national program for the health care of the elderly was formulated. So these are the developments which happen in Pakistan. We have to, this is a sort of governance. From here, we have to take that direction and we can lead to the end users who are, in this case, are elderly. Now, extent of basic needs, safe and secure environment, both in winter and summer. These are some of the requirements which are needed by our elderly basic amenities, a balanced food, access to fresh air, water, housing, transport, etc. Access to natural environment and aesthetic aspects. Use of voice and vote. Access to open space. And finally, self-care uh, self practice. Now, the third extent of family neighborhood comprises close family network love and affection of family, caring and sharing by family members, caring and sharing by neighborhood, meaningful daily activities to engage elderly, creating sense of belonging, social groups and gatherings, occasional programs, and finally, elderly association clubs and societies. Finally, coming over to the extent of health and education, it needs to know genetic factors of elderly, environmental and mental health needs, behavior management, healthcare services, card and accessibility, physical fitness and psychological conditions, elderly e-health and telemedicine, social interaction and access to education, educate public awareness, self-awareness, self-hygiene, self-discipline, etc. Perception pattern, and finally, lifelong learning and information. Now, coming over to the conclusion, 
there is a need to formulate inclusive, I would say inclusive, which is going to be quite comprehensive quality of life model based upon specific requirements of countries. It will help demographers to plan, execute, monitor, and improve quality of life of elderly. This framework may help to adopt or adapt quality of life best practices for specific countries. This framework may also help the stakeholders of household and living arrangement projections. Training programs may be considered by stakeholders to improve the quality of life of elderly. And finally, an inclusive path that is from governance to LND be designed for sustenance. Uh, this is what I wanted to say, my worthy audience. If you have any questions, you are welcome. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Javid for this very comprehensive uh, presentation. And uh, I guess uh, you may uh, stop sharing your screen now. And uh, then we can uh, move to our last presentation right. yeah, for today. And thank so, you, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much, Professor Javid. And so uh, for uh, those on the panelists or in the audience, if you have a question, uh, please uh, feel free to either type in the chat box or the Q&A box. Uh, either you can just type in, I have a question, and then I can uh, pass the microphone to you like uh, in our Q&A session, where you can also type in the question in detail, and then we can uh, like uh, start to think about those questions uh, before the Q&A session, okay? And uh, so now let's uh, move to our uh, last presentation for today, which is uh, by Professor Liu Keyang from Osaka University on Japan's experiences and challenges on universal health coverage for older population from international and the Japanese domestic views. Uh, Professor Liu, now the time is yours. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay, okay, thank you very much, Professor Zhang. Uh, Zhang, okay, uh, my name is uh, Liu from Osaka University. Uh, today, because of the li limit of time, I want to have a quick share of the report which we, Osaka Research Group, worked with WHO and other international res res researchers. Uh, name is, uh, yeah, as you introduced, Japan's experience and challenge on universal health coverage for other population from international and Japanese thematic views. Uh, I want to uh, introduce my research field and the history. So I worked in Osaka University Department of Public Health Graduate School of Medicine and a special uh, appoint to, uh, to compensation program. Uh, later, I'm going to make a brief introduce of this program. This is also an international collaboration pro program for aging, uh, to solve aging, pro uh, aging problem. And my research field is uh, lifestyle and non community disease and aging. So from six, 2016, I worked for uh, the Framework Convention on Table Control in WHO Geneva. And from 2017, I was in professor in Osaka University. And uh, 2018, I worked very closely with the University Health Science Center researcher with several projects on aging, uh, on aging um, research. And the 2019 Osaka University and the University College London joined lab for aging research for dementia. And the 2020 is WHO Kobe. So this report is also uh, found by, uh, uh, support by WHO Kobe. Uh, so the compensation project that we in the Osaka University is working on uh, is um, for the background is the world facing the challenge of uh, aging. So the global aging has made a disease par uh, paradigm shift from communicable disease to non-communicable disease. So Asian countries with a large, very large population are suffering from a rapid uh, aging and the low birth rates. So the new evidence and new skills and technologies to, to solve the health problem for aging, this is very urgently needed. So um, compensation, compensation consortium has formed by China and Japan, the Korean Ministry of Education, so the International Research Consortium involving Peking, Tsinghua, and Shanghai Joint University, uh, Tianjin University of Traditional Chinese Medicine, Guangdong Pharmaceutical University in China, 
and Osaka University in Japan and Nisei University in Korea. So our research consortium focuses on aging problem research, exchange uh, students, and achieve the first doctor, uh, doctoral uh, double degree program in medical and public health in Japan, Korea, and uh, as well in China. So uh, let's go back to our research topic. Uh, when we do research, get papers from PubMed and other international academic research engines. So uh, can we get enough information to know this uh, real situation? We only get the uh, information from the international uh, academic search engines. So can we get enough information to know what is happening, really happening in the, in, in the country? For example, when we mention the health and welfare in Japan, so what in your mind maybe the majority of uh, audience do not know much about the policy in the healthcare system. I only know that maybe the high level quality and cost is high level, and coverage is wide, life expectancy is long, uh, and housing population and the economic disparity level is uh, is not high. Uh, so we conduct uh, this research we want to know the history of Japan's endeavor on universal health coverage for older population. We want to understand the research focus by international Japan domestic researchers and uh, see what's the difference between them. Uh, discuss aging challenge in Japan society and how Japan view these these problems. Uh, let's see again about the major points that we uh, mentioned two slides ago. So if we have a close look at this, so high level and calling costs, this means financial burden in the social resource and take the financial burden uh, have the financial burden takes social uh, society resource and coverage wide also need money black life expectancy is long also take as in old people consume more medicine medicines and the society resources and then people healthy also need the education which means society resources so the policy makers is going to make the system work have to keep the balance very carefully. But how to keep the balance? The researchers should, should analyze all the data, should have the evidence from the analysis study and uh, conduct research, provide the evidence to policymakers. So the policymakers could make all this, uh, how, how to say, welfare system work by a very perfect way. So like this, all the good thing we see is a stone on the top and evidence from anal analysis, study and research are the cornerstone to keep the balance very carefully. So uh, in Japan, we could see the major policies change, the de development of welfare policy, policies for the elderly and uh, from 1963, the enactment of the Act of Social Welfare Service for the elderly. This is not only for the elderly, but for the, all the society. And this act is, is uh, betrayed the um, start of universal uh, that is a welfare, system, welfare uh, service uh, from Japan. So it's 50, uh, about 70. 50 years, uh, 70 years ago. At that time, the aging rate in Japan is 5.7. And with the time goes, and the aging rate also going up to the 2000, uh, the aging rate reached 70.3%. Uh, uh, that year, uh, 2000, enforcement of long-term care insurance system. So you can see that the, the policy makers always change uh, and do the ju adjustment of the policies based on the aging rate, based on the new evidence uh, that analysis from, from the Japanese databases. And now uh, Japan is a top uh, aging rate country, not one of the top, but the top. Only almost one third of the population over 65 years, uh, uh, 50, 65 years old. So the um, policy is keep changing. Uh, the Lancet even published a special issue in 2011 to uh, talk about Japan's universal health coverage uh, at 50 years. And many of the research that uh, were con con uh, include in, my, uh, in our report. So this report is, uh, this, this special issue uh, uh, talked very wide, uh, including the pursuing a health society in Japan, that is how wide life uh, expectancy is so high, nutrition survey to make the best thing, suicide and uh, education and the cost of quality. All of these 
papers are open access. So I think if you're interested in uh, the maybe the comprehend the big pictures of uh, Japan uh, healthware system, you could have uh, you could access by PubMed. And the papers are free. And we uh, back to the re report. We uh, conduct a, a search by the population target group is aging people, and the issue is the EQT and the EQT. Uh, uh, and the outcome is uh, healthcare success and care and uh, medical need re relevant words in English and Japanese. We conduct the search in English uh, uh, databases and uh, international databases, as well as Japanese domestic databases by, by Japanese. And uh, we also make the factors based on the three big principles is uh, financial difficulty and quality service and good health and equity in access. And make nine factors. Making nine factors to evaluate. Uh, we conduct a search in Japan domestic databases uh, and over and reviewed over four thousand papers. And uh, finally, we include thirty five papers. And the international databases we found there is one thousand is eight hundred thirteen papers that relevant in the topic and finally we involve we, we, we include 15. Uh, yeah we summarize them by authors public databases the Japanese international and concept identified as well as the bad factors and this is a lot of we, we made a lot of paper, tables and summarize many uh, information by outcome by subject by result but today we don't have time to to make a deep explanation of uh, uh, all the tables but if you interested in uh, what we find i think we you could contact me after or, or later asking question we could have a deep talk on this uh okay let's see some big big pictures so the international database research is focused on this topic only 15 papers and but by uh, japan the data uh, database researches uh 75 if you only focus on international data database researches uh re researches so uh, maybe you, some key information may last we cannot see the big picture of uh, what goes on in japan and uh, there's another in interesting thing is in the international research database distribution uh, factor one financial dis disparity in financial affordability almost take half uh, the international or or the, the japan researchers were published in uh, international databases uh, they focus on financial issue but uh, in japan domestic almost uh, not half but two fifths uh, 15 paper out of 35 focus on the geographical uh, disparities regional disparity uh, this um, parity so the focus are really different between the uh, uh, international and the domestic researches and we can see that from factor five to factor nine uh, international research database distribution do not have and but Japan the domestic databases talked um, more information about this. So we found that Japan uh, re achieved long life, uh, longer life expect expectancies and uh, relatively accessible universal coverage for the older population. And the uh, disparities in Japan uh, in the system are a low level. And uh, however, the inequities of opportunity assessing service and disparities between different groups of people still exist in Japan medical care system. And we found a very interesting thing that the rich people in Japan take the how do you say healthcare service over their needs because they have money. So they they uh, and uh, after the insurance the self uh, payment. Is very it is relatively low, so the rich people want to take more, uh, how to say, uh, medical care from the from the system. So what they receive is over their needs, and uh, international. Uh, I think late. I think uh, maybe in the future the policymaker is going to deal with this problem and uh, also fix the do some modify on the uh, law. So. Uh, international dom domestic research concentrate on financial barriers uh, 
of the resources and the regional different uh, regional difference, and not the majority, but uh, some studies focus on cultural, uh, psychological, and the uh, ethnic factors in both in the international domestic databases. But we didn't we did not find a lot of um, uh, points with a lot of many factors uh, have in in domestic. Databases, but not in inter international databases. So uh, after review, after we re uh, finished this review, uh, we found that the equity of service assessing it still exists not only in service but also in infrastructure and the uh, policy and the healthcare access and resource uh, location in health services in such an area is still limit in Japan. So other people can be considered as a potential disadvantaged group in current Japanese society from the viewpoint of uh, health and the long-term care uh, service access. Okay, and uh, thanks to my colleague at Osaka University and professor from uh, University of Sheffield, uh, Big University of Health Center, and Harvard University. So, and this research is funded by WHO uh, Center for Health Development. Thank you very much. My presentation is finished. Thank you, Professor Liu, and uh, and thank you our RJ presenters today. And now we are still left with a, a good thirty minutes for Q and A. And we already have uh, two questions in the chat box. Uh, I think one question uh, from uh, Professor Fong to uh, Professor uh, Patama has already been addressed. And the other one is uh, from uh, Professor Aris Ananta uh, to Professor Arif. And so, uh, Professor Ananta, do you want to ask the question personally? Uh, okay, uh, if if not, and then uh, uh, probably uh, uh, Professor Arif Jawid, you can uh, answer the question uh, uh, on the chat box. Yeah. Yes, uh, once again, if you have any questions, so please do ask. And so I think uh, Professor Anata's question is about what the role of community in household welfare and quality of life uh, for older people and what is impact on household composition and living arrangements. And uh, uh, Professor um, Javid, you can address these questions first, I guess. Mm. Uh, may I answer that question, please? Uh, this uh, the question is from the chat box. It's uh, from uh, Professor Anata. Uh, let me try to invite Professor Anata to ask a question uh, directly to you. Let me unmute. Uh, yeah. yeah, Professor yeah. Anata. <laughs> yeah, Professor Arif, I'm very interested in your presentation. Uh, I know in Islam there are many. Uh, there are important role of the community like zakat and so on and so on. So, what do you think about the role of the community there on the household composition and living arrangement? Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, I think you are very well aware of uh, Muslim community. Uh, that's why, if you see, I have written that family and neighborhood. Um, we are proud that our people they are having a nuclear family system and they are very close to each other. No doubt that uh, telephone and migration nowadays, you know, especially uh, to the international uh, areas, uh, people are going uh, out, but at the same time, uh, that integration is still there because telephones are still there. Okay, ICT is still, I mean, if uh, people are not, available face to face they are available online of course i mean for these elderly this ict will not help face to face help will help them uh, our uh, people are uh, having uh, vigilance i would say our community is vigilant about these elderly people that okay these are the people and uh, to be very honest 
uh, system or uh, social integration is so strong that they are not neglected at all. Uh, this one I can say. Why? Because all these are proactive people, for instance, uh, once they are going to mosque, then they meet them. That's why I've written there that uh, there are social groups, there are societies and clubs, and there are occasional programs in mosque and other you know, religious centers. So uh, they keep them occupied, um, all these elderly. Um, at the same time, uh, I would say the impact of course, household composition is reducing uh, due to um, the changes in the environment. It is happening all over the world. Uh, still, I would say that it is uh, directly proportional to uh, this composition is directly proportional to the number of people still looking after these elderly. People are going out, but at the same time, there are people who are looking. I mean, it is pride for Pakistani community or people to look after them, to take them to the clinic, to to be very honest, to press their feet, you know, uh, to help them to press their shoulders, that their stress is reduced. Um, I would say that, and at the same time, its impact is that we don't have a lot of uh, old homes in Pakistan. Trend is there. Trend is there that old homes, they are cropping up, but not of that size where we can say that, yes, this is uh, something, you know, uh, of a challenge or some, you know, issue. So I would say that uh, problem is there, but it is not that challenging. I hope I have answered, uh, Prof, your Thank you. question. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. And uh, we have another question from Professor Riko Hayashi to uh, Professor Liu. Uh, Professor Hayashi, do you want to ask the question personally? Oh, I'm upgraded. So thank you very much for the presentation, uh, Dr. Liu. And uh, I was, as I wrote in the chat box, I was curious with the gap between international and Japanese database on the research on the financial um, analysis on healthcare, if I understand correctly. And is this gap exist also for other countries such as international database, VS Korean database or international VS Chinese database? Okay, thank you very much, Professor Hayashi. Uh, thank you very much for your question. And actually, uh, after this uh, review, after the review, we, we talked with Peking University uh, uh, a professor in Professor Zhongyi's research group. Uh, and uh, he's working on the Chinese database and see mm. there's also a gap uh, in international, the, the international data, uh, papers published for Japanese, uh, Chinese uh, health, healthy policies and uh, the evidence in Chinese uh, domestic databases. So we start to work by, uh, and maybe this is good for a series of papers that that um, the China and Korea and, uh, and, and the Japan to show the difference between international and the domestic databases and uh, see is there a gap or not. Uh, Thank you, interesting. And also for your information, the payment of older persons for the medical care, um, mm -hmm. the new measures to increase the out-of-pocket payment as 20% is going to be implemented from this year. And already some rich, pay, rich older persons are paying 30% of out-of-pocket payment instead of 10%. <laughs> so all these complicated systems that I think that is why there is the barrier between Japanese and the international community because it is so complicated. Anyway, mm -hmm. thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much, Professor Hess. Uh, thank you both. And uh, we, I think we have a question from the audience uh, by Kuang Jianrong. Uh, let me allow you to talk. Kuang Jianrong, are you there? Uh, hello, hello. Hello, yes. hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Um, um, excuse me, I want uh, I 
Uh, I mm. hope you have some time to prepare. I, I, I can't. Uh, um, I can't prepare well. <laughs> Please. Oh, so like, uh, uh, like what? Uh, who do you want to ask the question to? Uh, uh, I want you some time to prepare. Just, um, just give me some time. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, so uh, like how, how much more time do you need? Uh, because uh, we only have four minutes left. And so uh, um, yeah. uh, we, uh, can we can we get it? <laughs> get it. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, it, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, don't worry. Yeah, you can you can always just uh, type in uh, your question in the Q&A box. Is that OK? Uh, okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jinrong. Um. So, other questions from the panel panelists or from the audience? Uh. Yeah. Actually, I uh, as the uh, the, the chair, I want to use my uh. Uh, of authority a little bit and so I have a question of uh, Professor uh, Jawid and so I find this uh, graph on this uh, different systems about uh, the elderly's uh, quality of life very fascinating and so I'm wondering that like whether or not the graph will pan up differently across gender right and so for example elderly men and women they may drive uh, uh, like support uh, like differently from different layers of the system. And so uh, I want to listen to your thought on that, uh, like gender differences in this uh, uh, support system or this uh, system of quality of life. Uh, Professor Jawid? Yeah, are you calling me? Yeah. Uh, yeah sure, sure. I yeah, I yeah, I'm uh, just wondering about these uh, gender differences in this uh, the, uh, this graph on the system of uh, quality of life. How these uh, systems uh, may work differently for elderly men and women. Um, I would say that uh, uh, I mean, ladies are looking after specifically, you know. Mm -hmm. um, since we don't have uh, that uh, mixed family system, uh, of course, uh, within that nuclear family, we have mixed family system, but mm -hmm. outside, uh, people deter to mix up. So ladies are looking after the elderly ladies, ah. and gents are looking after uh, the gents. Mm -hmm. so the, this is, I, I will say, you know. Uh, but as far as um, the family is concerned, uh, there are um, daughter-in-laws, uh, son-in-laws, they are there. I don't think there is any gender discrimination there at that level. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. And so we still have one more minute left. So any remaining questions or comments? from the audience. I guess uh, if not, and uh, let's uh, just um, put our hands together and thank our uh, three presenters for a three like very interesting talk. And also uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining us today.